Well, Iris Star, thank you so much for joining us today. I think you're on the way to the airport, are you, at the moment? Yeah, I literally just left. That's why I had I needed some time. <laughs> in the well, car. You're... I'm literally in the car right now. I have to Listen. do some little pick-up for you guys quickly, so I look good. Well, you've, you've managed it. So if people don't know, we mentioned the call 10 minutes ago. We didn't know, well, you weren't sure it was going to be visualised. But mm-hmm. you turned it around. You've done your makeup. I said to um, Joel, one of my producers, I said, should we be doing a makeup if she's got to quickly do it? And to it looks like you've been um, in makeup for hours. You've smashed it. You've done it really well. You've Thank clearly you. got it down to a fine art. Thank you very much. Really good. Um, I'm in my grandma's house. I'm at my nan's house. So I'm not quite as in a glamorous location. <laughs> Um, but I know that you're massively family orientated as well, right? So you're a bit like me. So you're a big family person. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And do you miss them when you're on the road? Because it seems like you know, you're constantly traveling. I do miss them. But, but, but I'm always like talking to my family, even when I'm on the road. Like I talk to my mom every day. I talk to my sister. My, um, my family group chat is literally like a meme library. Like we live in and we're just laughing every time so as much as I miss them I I usually just have constant communication with them so it's, it's not as bad as it could be mm. oh that's lovely and the whatsapp chat that's always the thing you're probably most worried about getting leaked right for me I'm yeah. like if anyone ever leaked the family whatsapp chat that's when it would all go down <laughs> that's my main concern um, and also so you mentioned there about how you speak to your mom and your sister all the time I think you're very close to auntie as well um, yes. But I also heard that apparently your your dad was the one that was really keen on you studying before f- uh, focusing on a music career. Is that right? Is he kind of the strict disciplinarian yes, of the household? He was, he was very strict and he never used to allow me like, like he, he loved it when I, I sang at home. He loved it when me and my brother wrote music, but he never wanted us to take it seriously. He would be like, nope, no choir. Nope, no, nope, they're not doing that. So he used to be very strict when he came to music. Well, that I think that's most dads, isn't it? Because when you're chasing a career such as music or with myself presenting, you know, for, for a lot of families, they want you to have stability and they want you to have an education. So it all comes from love. Um, but true. I bet he sees the crowd now. True, very true. My dad yeah. wanted me to be a lawyer or a diplomat or something. I was like, sir, I don't have the brains for that one. <laughs> that's a compliment he believed in you he clearly thinks you're very intelligent he, did. he, so. did. he really did believe in me to be honest if your family are a bit apprehensive about your chosen career path when you were younger do you treat them now do you treat your mum and your sisters to sort of say do you know what look I can look after you now definitely that's my family you know as much as my mom my mom was also very kind of she was not very strict she was very supportive but sometimes she was trying to, she was very protective of what I was doing so if I had to go to like an audition she would literally take me there and stand and make sure no one talks to me until I'm done with the audition like, yeah, so like, yes, I'm the mom I'm the, yeah anyway, so she was like that so yeah but now you know I have the opportunity to go to like just spoil her and just like treat her well I just you know, let her enjoy her life to be honest lovely do you think you have quite a few personality traits that you've picked up from your mum then because you have to be a fierce woman in this industry. You have to be protective of your heart, your integrity. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. I definitely picked up a lot. You know, I protect myself better now because of what I've learned from her. I protect my space, my energy, my heart, my mind. You know, I don't put myself in situations that will make me feel a certain way. I just, I rest, I know my boundaries and I, and I make sure people respect them because of my mom and my auntie. So, yeah. Well, I know you're very spiritual and you're very intuitive, aren't you? And I'd like to think of myself as the same. And um, I've been asking a bit of research. I don't know what you're thinking of this because I'm a Scorpio. And I know people are scared of Scorpios. And I saw that you're a Gemini. And I didn't know how <laughs> Scorpios and Geminis, right? Some of my best friends are Geminis. So I feel like we've got on really, really <laughs> Geminis well. Geminis are the best. We're the best. But, We're the best. But, no, Geminis are cool, but there's definitely two sides, okay? So I was just thinking with you, if there's that strut, so you know I'm right, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so you have that sort of strong, fierce side, maybe protective side, like you said, guarding your heart. But do you have to put up that fierce side because on the other flip side is somebody quite soft and quite sensitive? Definitely. I feel like, to be honest, like the part that people get to see is usually the the um, funny side and like the 
laid back side. But I make sure at the end of the day, I my my other side always makes sure to put like once people want to like cross my boundary, I'm like, mm, forget that I'm smiling. Don't try that with me. You get but like <laughs> but remember like, I'm a Scorpio, so that is exactly. definitely um, yes. my, I'm loyal to a fault, but when the claw comes out. That's yes, it. my other sister yeah. is a Scorpio. She doesn't play. She does not play. My <laughs> my big sister, she's a Scorpio. She does not play with anyone. But she's the funniest person ever. But at the same time, she's like, don't do that. So I learned a lot from that. But um, my my the side that people know me for is my funny side, my playful mm. side. I'm so quirky. I'm just so geeky. I'm a nerd. So people know that side. <laughs> do you think it's quite hard for a female artist to? be playful, be geeky and have a laugh when also so much of the industry now is obsessed with the image of being seen as, you know, feisty and a girl boss and don't mess with me. It must be quite hard to sort of, I don't know, it is. give in to both. Some, you know, I show them the mm. To be honest, I think about it every time. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to be like mysterious and you know, just be like, but I can't, I just talk too much. <laughs> What's the geeky thing about you then? Tell me. I know you like Big Bang Theory, right? Yes, I do. Yes. And I love reading books and I love anime. Oh my God. Anime. Really? I love anime. And I'm just like, I, I like to just like make everybody around me feel comfortable. So when I'm outside with like my friends or like people, I always try to like, just like do things, make them feel geeky. I'm just so quirky. I'm just like, sometimes I watch videos. I'm like, why did I do that? That is so embarrassing, Ira. But yeah. <laughs> Tell me a bit more about anime because I just feel like I can't get into it. But people are obsessed. So what am I missing? Me too. I, I never used to like it. I just thought I, I used to like the idea of anime, but I never used to watch it until like this year. And I watched this um TV show called Castlevania, and it just like opened my mind when it came to anime. Like it's just it was just like a movie, but it was just better to be honest. It was just right. like a series. It was just better, you know. More like more colors, more like um just more re- more everything and I just loved it and I started watching more and now I'm completely obsessed I feel like anime just like opens your imagination and you just you know it's funny it's it's, it's just it's, yeah it's just so good is it good escapism as well because it can be quite a high pressured world right and you're constantly on constantly on the go I feel mm-hmm. like is it quite good to help relax to just transform into another world definitely definitely that's definitely what it is because sometimes when I'm like in like you know the airport and I'm so tired and I need to like just like run away I can't sleep I need to just run away from the chaos I just go into my, I just go to my phone or my laptop and I'm watching like seven deadly sins or something I'm just laughing and people are looking at me like like you don't understand I need to be here right now <laughs> I've, I've heard that you're a bit of a Zac Efron fan as well yeah, so, I, feel, I like this. I like all these guilty pleasures, and you know, was it High School Musical that brought you into that? Yeah, definitely. I was such a High School Musical fan. Like that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do. I wanted to do music because of High School Musical. I thought I was going to be in the movie. To be honest, I had so much belief as a child. Like I would daydream about being in the High School Musical movie. Like everything. <laughs> I think every little girl did. Did they like? Yeah, I just go down the street and have everybody join into my song. And if I feel sad, I want everyone to join in. And if I feel mm-hmm. happy, like, wouldn't it be lovely if the world was like that? Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, somebody else that might be seen as a little bit more credible is uh, Kelly Rowland. And I love yes! you collaborated with her. Oh my God, that's who I'm a fan of. You can have Zac Efron. I respect him. He's amazing. But <laughs> Kelly Rowland, I grew up with this world. And to be honest, I only liked Zac Efron when I was like much younger. Like now, yeah. I'm, really, I'm not really familiar with his work now. But like when yeah. I was younger, I used to be so obsessed. Zac Efron, Justin Bieber, the whole anything that had to do with Disney, count me in. Yeah, Disney. Yeah. I'm such a Disney fan. I knew everything. I knew all the music. I knew all the dances. I knew every single TV show. But now Kelly Rowland, I have a song with Kelly Rowland. I used to watch Justin's Child when I was younger. I used to listen to their music, and now just being able to say that I have music with Kelly Ruland is just the most amazing thing ever. I'm so grateful. Well, I'm a big Disney geek as well, right? So I love that. I can talk <laughs> about Disney all day. Disney is my anime, right? That's what I love. So I've got to ask them, what was your favorite Disney film? Oh my God, I could list them. So Hannah Montana was definitely my number one because of the music that came with it. And that was like, 
I feel like that's when I started listening. That's when I went, I literally wanted to be a musician when I was watching Hannah Montana growing up. And I would just watch it every time. And I was like, I want to be like Hannah Montana. Hence the blonde hair. Oh my God. Like I'm making all my like childhood dreams come through right now. The blonde hair and everything, the pink. <laughs> Literally. So I used to watch a lot of Hannah Montana, Wizard of Waverly Place, and Fam, um, That's So Raven and all that. Everything, everything. I used to be so obsessed. And what about Prince of Egypt? I heard you're a big fan of that film as well, right? Oh my God. Who told you all of these? How do you know all of this? You know everything. Oh my God. I feel like you're a bit like my spirit animal because I love, love, love that film. And I'm the biggest Mariah Carey so fan. See, like, so I Mariah and Whitney so doing a duet on it as well. See, just so Iconic. Funny thing that I never used to like it as much as my brothers. My brothers loved it so much. So they would watch it every time. I could literally recite the movie at this point. <laughs> of how much I used to have to watch it because of my brothers. So I was so obsessed with that movie. Oh my God. Yeah, it's killer soundtrack, killer soundtrack. So how does it feel then knowing that there's loads of little girls and maybe little boys watching you from their childhood and looking up to you the way you looked up to Hannah Montana, you're doing that for the next generation. It's just the most amazing thing. It's literally what I wanted. I remember like growing up and I didn't, like there was no representation when it came to my culture and I, and young people doing music. There was Hannah Montana, but it was so far away. So it didn't make me feel like I could do it. As much as I believed I could, I also had some doubts because there was no representation to like, that could to inspire me and motivate me. There was nobody, there was no black young girl doing music. There was no, so I remember when I was like 10, I was like, I told my mom, I want to be a teenage superstar. Like I literally said that. I said, I don't want to wait till I'm 25. I want to be a teenage superstar because I want people to, younger girls to be able to watch me and get inspired from that and want to make music from that. I want to be, like, I have my younger sister, my younger sister and her friends. I want them to be able to, like, be like oh, like, yeah, I want to be, like, a star. Like, I just want that so much. I want to inspire them. And I feel like that's what I'm doing. So, yeah. yeah. Do you feel like you like to be then a big sister figure to people to sort of look after them and have them look up to you? Or do you want to feel more like, if you're a team star, then you could have been quite playful and quite silly. Yeah, <laughs> no. So I, I was really, I'm really playful and silly. So I really wanted to just create like a world for young African kids and young black kids to just feel safe, you know, mm-hmm. through my music, my videos. I have a lot of like, like in my videos, I know I get a lot of like, um, you know, like um, people are saying, oh, she's too, she's cringe or oh, she's too, like, why is she doing that? Like, that's, I'm like, people don't understand. I literally have to, because of young people are watching me. And as much as I love to do it, I want to inspire people to be able to feel free. You understand? I put, like, just little details and stuff, like having pink hair or, like, wearing this, wearing that, wearing short skirts. And, like, it's something I want to do as a child, and I'm doing it now because I want people to, I want younger girls to be able to feel safe when it came to me. Like, I want them to watch my videos and feel like, Ira is talking to them. Ira is doing this for them. Ira is doing this for us. So, yeah. That's a lot of pressure, though, that you're putting on yourself. Do you ever feel a bit nervous before you perform or just in the day-to-day? Do you sort of, are you an overthinker? So, um, my younger sister, she has friends. She has, like, a group of young girls, and they're all teenagers. And just, just, like, when I want to, like, stop, I just think about her. I think about her, and I think about her friends, and I think about, like, what, how happy they are when they like make videos to my music and how happy like how inspired they are how motivated they are when they you know when they make videos to my music when they see me when they meet me they're like oh my god it's Ira and I just <laughs> and even my younger sister she I see her almost every day but she still gets so happy when she sees me she's like ah, it's Ira Star I'm like you know my name stop calling me Ira Star <laughs> you know my government name but she just she just gets so happy and just Little things like that just inspires me and makes me not want to stop. You know, I just want to keep going. Well, I'm a big sister too, right? And it is, I feel like it's a personality trait, right? When you're a big sister, you feel like the responsibility of like being a mom, but sometimes worse. I think I'm more strict than my mom. I'm more protective than my mom is because they've done it all before, right? One of the things my mom used to stop me from doing when I was younger, she just allows my sister to love. And I'm the one being like, don't do that. Stop, come here, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Back home, by ten, but like every time, I'm, I'm that, I'm that, I'm the mom. 
Well, we know how scary the world can be, right? We know that not everybody has the same pure hearts as our little sisters. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. What advice then would you give to your younger self or if you were in your younger sister's shoes? Because with age comes wisdom. So what do you wish you'd have known earlier, sooner? Patience. Just be patient. Don't be too hard on yourself. You know, for younger girls, for my younger self, for my younger sister, for younger people, don't be too hard on yourself. It's very, we live in a world where it's so fast paced and it's, you just want to do, you just want to be, just want to be big. You want to do this. You want to, you want to do everything at a fast pace, but there's no problem in taking time in your craft, in your life and learning and learning and just being patient with yourself, not just the world, also being patient with yourself and God and just trust what God has for you and just, just what he's going to do in your life. So, yeah. I, I need to follow that. I think we can all take a step from that, right? She says, yeah. as she's in a car on the way to an airport, it just shows we never have time to follow our own words of wisdom and be patient. Um, when do you get a chance to relax? Apart from watching um, anime. Is it anime or anime? Am I saying it right? Anime. Apart from that, what do you... Anime. <laughs> anime. There we go. I don't see, I don't even watch, I don't even know, but I know it's massive. Apart from that, what else do you do to relax? To be honest, like right now, I don't do a lot to relax because I'm constantly working. But I'm planning on taking a break very soon and just, you know, living live outside of this. I just want to, like, yeah, I want to, I want to see live outside of this and just, you know, take a week break and just, like, sleep. I really love to sleep. So, yeah, I just want to sleep for as long as I can. <laughs> it's my favorite place, right? When you get into bed, that's the, as you get older, that becomes the highlight of the day. Yeah, that's like the best time. Like, oh my God, I'm about to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not setting the alarm. I bet that's something you don't get to do often. But when you can go to bed and you don't have to have an alarm set, oh. Be like, I'm used to waking up by seven every day, seven, eight every day because of my um, natural alarm, clock, my body alarm. Right. But now I want to be able to just wake up by like 12 yeah. p.m. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Oh, it's not morning for you. It's morning for me. Sorry. <laughs> you need to get those really dark cut out blinds that stop any light going through. Because if you're naturally yeah. an early riser, you need exactly. to trick your body. That's my top exactly. tip. Exactly. Yeah. So what would be your, you talk about going on holiday. Talk me through an Iris Star's perfect destination. If you could have anything for a week, take me there. Where would we go? Jamaica. Jamaica. <sighs> I would go to Jamaica. I like I like anywhere that is like really that reminds me of home, but it's just like a different version of my home. So I don't mm. like to go anywhere that's completely different. Like I like to go, but like for vacation, for me to feel really relaxed, I like to feel like I'm close to home. Like food wise, um, culture wise, just anything that is really close but kind of different at the same time. And Jamaica mm. is one of the places I really love going to Ghana too, because Ghana reminded me so much of home, but just different in a way. We're still home. So that's the thing which I want to go to Jamaica so bad. I just want to go. I want to go to like all those parties where like girls are like, you know, twerking. <laughs> I love the honesty. I love the honesty. And then sleep all day and party all night, right? Yeah, yes. exactly. The dream <laughs> life. <laughs> and then watch anime while you're sunbathing in between and uh, having a few cocktails with your baby sister. That sounds like the perfect trip, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I know that you're a huge Nicki Minaj fan and you've said yourself that she is somebody you credit as being hugely, hugely inspirational. And I was lucky enough to actually watch her almost front of stage or side of stage um, back in the summer at Wireless Festival. So I saw her in her glory and she was hypnotising. She was so iconic. What is it you love so much about Nicki Minaj? Everything. Oh, my God. Everything. I remember the first time I noticed I knew about Nicki Minaj I remember the first day I heard about her music anytime it was my like I, I just came back from boarding school it was my first like time in boarding school. I just came back I remember her song came on I think it was um super bass and my younger sister knew the lyrics to everything I was like why don't she know the lyrics and I don't know like I'm the like I didn't understand why she knew my, my younger sister knew everything about Nicki Minaj I was like I wouldn't know about Nicki Minaj too because I was listening to her music and I just fell in love oh my god like my whole personality changed after Nicki Minaj like I became this confident girl like I would go to school I'll be like yeah like whatever like if I get punished I'll be like wait till I become a superstar wait till <laughs> so Nicki Minaj she know so this? 
Mm-hmm. Have you ever told her? Have you ever reached out to her? Does she know? No, I've never. I just can't wait to meet her. I feel like I'll be so starstruck when I meet Nicki Minaj. I will be so starstruck when I meet her. I love her so much. What would you like to ask her if you could have one question, Nicki Minaj? Because who knows? She might be watching this interview. Okay. One. Can I have a hug, please? Like a long, oh. like a long one-minute hug. <laughs> so you cut the energy. Yeah, yeah, I just want to um, just thank her. You know, I don't know if I want to ask her questions. I feel like she has done everything. Like she has done what she needs to do. I just want to thank her, to be honest. I, I have the opportunity to give her a hug and thank her for just inspiring me. You just want to thank her for everything she's mm-hmm. done. Yeah. yeah. So are you are you a tactile person then? Is touching your love language? Um, not really, to be honest. Not when when people try to me, I'm like, mm, uh, so definitely not. <laughs> so probably not. Probably maybe with my like siblings sometimes mm-hmm. I uh, call just so, so they can know that you know like um you know I love them just to make them know but like with other people nah I love my person. <laughs> but Nikki's the exception. Nikki's the exception. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so anybody else? Because you know what? Sometimes you've got to put it in the universe. So if you can meet Nikki, that'd be amazing. What other two people are on your hit list that you just love to give a hug and soak up their energy? Brianna, definitely. Brianna, just... uh, Brianna really inspired me too. Like, as um, a young, like... When I when I became when I was turning like 13, 14, I started getting to Rihanna more and she wanted people that also inspired me a lot. You understand? Like a lot. So Rihanna definitely, they're yeah, just too much, too much, too many people. Rihanna have you, smelled, have you smelled Rihanna's new perfume that she's got out? No. If you're hugging her, you'd be close. Oh, it's amazing. It's beautiful, ah. honestly. <laughs> you need it in your life. It's so good. And uh, yeah, it's exactly what you'd imagine Rihanna to smell like. Oh uh, no! I want it now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> so it seems like you're a big fan of females. Then that's the energy you like to sur- surround yourself with. You've got your sisters, your mum, uh, yeah. you know, Nicki Minaj, Rihanna. Very female tribe. Yes, definitely, definitely. I'm inspired by a lot of females from my mom, to Nicki Minaj, to like musicians, even like Earth Act, even old musicians like Earth Act Kid, like all those people. Like I just used to listen to them a lot, and they just by me i'm also a, i'm also a big fan of like male artists and you know i have two brothers and they have friends they're also my friends and i love them but females are my number one number one <laughs> i feel like sometimes men get a bit of a bad rep don't they it's sort of seen as like if you're either a, a girl's girl or you know you like guys but actually we can all get along together yeah. i've got a lot of close male friends and they have good energy too very true we can i know you're a huge fan of jamaica and i was a little bit disappointed that the uk wasn't on your list when you said where you'd love to go on holiday i was a bit disappointed i'm not gonna lie okay i am always in the uk that's like i can't have holiday in the uk i know too many people there they're just gonna be in my house and just <laughs> creating a rocket i the, the uk is, london is like my favorite place to be in the world i love it so much like that's literally my favorite place but not for vacation <laughs> what do you think about london food have you had much British food? Not really. <laughs> have you tried fish and chips yet? Yeah. Have you had a proper fish yes, and chips? Yeah, yeah, chips? I, yeah. I have tried it, but it was homemade. So oh. it was homemade. No, 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 no. You need to go to a fish and chip shop and it needs to like, the minute you walk in, the, the smell of fat hits you. They're warm. It covered loads of salt and vinegar. On, honestly, try it. You'll absolutely love it. I need to. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to, yeah. to, try, to try And a good afternoon tea. Do you like cake? I love cake. Oh, I do have an afternoon tea. That is the one. <laughs> yeah, I do love tea. And I have, I went to like a cat cafe one time in London and it was just tea and it was just like kittens and cats cuddling me. It was just the best thing ever. It was the best thing ever. With like, I, mean, I don't know what they call it. The pastry scones. Is it scones? scones? Yes. Well, sometimes really? so, some people say scone and some people say scone. It's like a big debate. And then it's like, do you put the jam on first or the cream? It's the yes. the nation in the UK. To be it was honest. really good. I can't lie. It was really, really good. And what about British artists? Which ones are you listening to at the moment? Mm, I'm listening to um, Stormzy. A lot of Stormzy. I really love Stormzy. Adele. Her album is just... Uh, in your beautiful. feelings, right? Oh, beautiful. Adele, Dave, definitely. Is this R&B artist called Jack James. I love his music. So, yeah. I'm listening to right now from the UK. And can we look forward to you collaborating with any of those soon? 
I can't really say much, but you're gonna see. You're gonna see. <laughs> Oh, you and Adele would be what I wanted to say. I feel like we'd all be crying, right? Really, that love. <laughs> amen. 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 Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. It looks like you're parking up now. It looks like you've got to your destination. So thanks for keeping me entertained while you're in your car journey. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thank you for your patience also. Really. <laughs> it was worth thank it. I've absolutely loved it. Thank you.